Cool. Good to meet you. What's up? All right, good. So, uh, did you enjoy the end of the world last week? It was the end of the world. It wasn't, wasn't bad, right? As end of the world go, I think that one was all right. I think it was all right. It is, uh, that, you know, that particular cult might have been full of shit, but I think it is on its way. I think it's, I mean, we got dogs in sweaters and kids on leashes. It can't be long. It can't, how much fucking longer could it be? Really, you gotta put a sweater on your dogs? Dogs are sweaters. They're walking, shitting sweaters. That's what they do. That's, it's like putting a little bathing suit on a fish. It's all, it's fucking, doesn't do it. Goddamn thing they have on little shoes, the little booties they wear. All that shit does, all it does is fucking piss off homeless people. That is it. That is it. How pissed would you be if it was the middle of winter, you're sitting on a sidewalk with no jacket and a wiener dog struts by in, in, in cashmere? You, if, if you're that guy, you are now morally justified in eating that dog. You are. I just, I want to make that clear. And the, and the kid leashes, like, really? You gotta, most American kids are like 80 pounds overweight. How far are they gonna fucking waddle if you <laughs> turn your back for one minute? I mean, they're, 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 if you do lose them, look downhill, all right? They're downhill. They, they can't, can't go against gravity, you know? And, and they gotta come back eventually. You have their inhaler. They'll be back. They're, you have their inhaler. You have the Slim Jim. They know where the Slim Jim comes from. They do. They, they're fucking wheezing back. <laughs> Slim Jim, you got the Slim Jim? They're not going far. You know? I don't know. I, it, Cause that's Michelle Obama's big thing, right? The obesity epidemic. And if it's such a problem, like, and I, I don't understand that terminology either. Like I was chubby when I was little. It was just, you were fucking chubby. That was it. it now it's like an epidemic, it's medical terms. And, but if it's such a problem, I think you just, we just need an obesity exchange program. We should take some of our little land manatees and ship them ship them over to some of the third world countries, right? And then they could ship back their heroin chic kids and then we could fatten up their kids in our traditional diet of deep fried Skittles and chocolate covered butter or whatever the fuck we have. And, and then our kids would slim down on the traditional Bangladeshi diet of sticks and sticks. And then once they've changed in weight, you could ship them back, right? You could globalize the fat, you know? You could share the love handles that way, right? You could. Good. Anyway, this is for those of you not liking my other stuff. Have you ever noticed the words unicorn and acorn both mean one corn? <laughs> saying. Anyway. So I hope you don't mind if I, if I get uh, political here for a minute. And I'm surprised you don't hear more politicians saying this, but uh, uh, I feel it pretty strongly. Like, fuck the Amish, right? Fuck the Amish, all right? Does everybody know what the Amish are? Fuck them, all right? Because I think those bearded apple butter making motherfuckers might have it right, and that pisses me off. Think about the way they live. They've never contributed to global warming because they don't have fucking cars or factory farms. They don't, they don't lose any money in the stock market. The housing collapse because all their money's tied up in black frocks and barn raising tools, you know? They, they never had to look at Britney Spears' bald, confused cooch when it was all over the news. <laughs> three years ago. They, they never have subjected themselves to a Wendy's famous Baconator burger, which <laughs> means they've never been through the four-day Wendy's recovery period, you know? They, they, they don't have to hear the screeching idiocy of Sarah Palin and the poorly crafted Tourette's of Glenn Beck. But fuck the Amish, all right? <laughs> they don't vote for the assholes we put into office. So I would, look, I would gladly shave my upper lip and put on a stovepipe hat right now if it wasn't for the fact that they don't have internet porn or, or, or Slurpees. If they would just let Slurpees and internet porn into their fucking open the barn doors and let them in, I would be there, man. I would get out of here in a, a, a fucking horse and buggy and find me a goodly Amish maiden named Dorothy Stoltzfus and we were plant some radishes so call me Abraham I don't give a fuck right. fuck them <laughs> 
told me there's a website now where they you type in your neighborhood and it shows you a map of your neighborhood with a with a with a red dot for every pedophile that lives near you. <laughs> Apparently that shit ag exists. And don't get me wrong, those are the biggest sleaze balls on the planet. But why only pedophiles? Why not like murderers? You wouldn't want to know if a fucking murderer's downstairs, <laughs> O.J. Simpson's living next door. You know, what about attempted murderer? That's just someone that tried to kill someone and fucking sucked at it. You know? <laughs> yeah. He might not kill you, but if he stabs you 44 times with a plastic spork, it's gonna sting like a bitch, you know? I, I'd almost rather have a murderer, someone who takes pride in their work and gets the job done, you know? With some fucking motivation, right? What about road ragers? You wanna know if road ragers are in your neighborhood? Cause that's a gateway crime to graffiti penis art. It is. I looked it up. And graffiti penis art is the gateway crime to cat fucking. And what kind of cat owner would I be if I didn't keep one eye out for the cat fuckers? You know, before you know it, you type in your neighborhood, it's covered in red dots. You're like, oh shit, there's 19 dog fondlers in my district alone. I, I don't know if I wanna live here. And how do we know the pedophiles aren't using that website to find their friends? <laughs> Get together and create some sort of pedophile army, you know? Some unstoppable platoon of pederasts with their fucking kitty porn and candy corn, you know? All the traffic would be stopped up in the city behind a convoy of unmarked vans. There'd, there'd be no more gym coaches or candy store employees, you know? No, no more puppeteers or carnies. Nowhere to get a decent caricature drawn. <laughs> It'd be awful. What are we doing with the internet, you know? It was supposed, we're supposed to be in the information age and no one knows fucking shit. No one knows a goddamn. It's just making us meaner. It's making us meaner, isn't it? The comments that are left under videos because it's all anonymous, so people don't give a shit. Yeah, go ahead, call that guy a shit stained monkey brain because he you fucking, you didn't like his video. Who cares if it makes him sit in a corner popping Valium and reading Goodnight Moon over and over and over again? That's his life. Maybe the person that posted that video was a five year old with a terminal illness, but if he didn't want to get called a twad face, he never should have put up that clip of his hamster eating a piece of popcorn in Bermuda shorts, you know? It's, it's making us assholes, it is. I had someone disagree with me online, so they put, ha, 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 you have a lazy eye. First of all, I don't, but what a fucked up way to debate someone. Like, no one would do that in person. Like, I disagree with you on the budget crisis, and here's my rebuttal. You smell like a dead raccoon. Just this fragmentary shit is making us all assholes. I mean, we will buy fucking, I hate, I hate that manipulation you have to deal with. Like, yeah, I went into Starbucks, I want a, a, a piece of coffee cake. I'm like, can I have a piece of coffee cake? The guy's like, which kind? And it's got a name, and it's called Crumbleberry Coffee Cake. And I thought to myself, I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna say the word Crumbleberry in public. <laughs> fucking trying to live my life with some dignity here, all right? I don't, I don't want to say crumbleberry unless someone's pointing a gun or a sick baby at me. So I, was like, I was like, that one? And he's like, which one? And he fucking knew which one, all right? Because the, the other one was called like Coffee Palooza or some shit and was clearly only meant for asexual middle-aged women who wear Christmas sweaters out of season and fucking watch the DVD box set of Who's the Boss? He knew which one. <laughs> fucking wanted to hear me say it because he's got a miserable fucking job. He's got to sit there getting screamed at by Snooky lookalikes all day long because he accidentally put three pumps of caramel piss sauce into their strawberry mochiata caramel piss latte. So he's getting screamed at. So the only joy he gets all day long is forcing 30-year-old dudes to say words like crumbleberry as, as we slowly place our balls in the tip cup. No, so I told him to go fuckleberry himself and I left. Cause what, what choice do you have at that point? But it's, it's not his fault, it's, it's a corporate decision, you know? They, they want to infantilize us. They want to make us subconsciously feel like little kids because little kids make stupid fucking decisions like buying coffee cake that's called crumbleberry and, and buying Snuggies in bulk. And remember that time next time you're, remember that next time you're at, at like Cold Stone Creamery deciding between the like it size and the gotta have it size. <laughs> And, and if you walk up and you're like, you want like it or gotta have it? I'm like, I want a medium. He's like, you mean a gotta have it? I mean, go fuck yourself, all right? Really? Really? You don't, I don't know what sizes are unless you say our stupid fucking terms. I don't, 
Or you, they study all, you know, they do testing on this shit. Like you go into Subway and they want to be called sandwich artists. You, you put meat on a piece of bread. You're not a fucking artist, all right? Picasso would shit himself if he were here right now. And, but they did testing and found out we're 10% more likely to order from a sandwich artist rather than a sandwich technician or a sandwich aficionado or a sandwich warlord, you know? I, I don't even think they're right. I'm more likely to buy from the warlord because... If you don't, you're getting honey mustard across your face, like some sort of culinary cum shot. And I don't know he's gonna post that on YouTube, because that's what warlords do. They take away your dignity. Or, or you go into like a, a grocery, Dwayne Reed or something, the grocery store, and they want you to buy the MVP, VIP cards, and then they monitor everything you ever buy. So I'll get the card because I want the discount, but then I'll end up spending as much as I was gonna save just by buying weird shit to fuck with their system. So like, I'll get my groceries and then I'll throw in like a giant flashlight, some nail polish and a Hannah Montana cupcake, you know? <laughs> then come back a day later, return the cupcake and get a Red Bull and some vaginal cream. Then come back an hour later, return the Red Bull, take a piss in the cereal aisle. Good luck analyzing that, you cocksuckers. And they're sitting in some fucking sleazy corporate boardroom in Delaware, staring at a computer screen, going, oh, looks like men over 25 are buying more vaginal cream than they used to. We'll, we'll have to market to that demographic. So we'll, we'll name it something snazzy and macho, like Vaginal Maximus. And, um, then a week later, I see a national commercial starring Zac Efron talking about how he loves his Vaginal Maximus. And that's when I know I've won. I'll leave you with this. Balloon animals are a great way to teach children that things they love dearly may spontaneously explode. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Lee Camp, thanks a lot.